So I've been working my ass off all day. Um, very, very productive day. And I just got done painting a truck. We'll go in there and look at that truck. But I also painted a bumper, uh, two bumper ends, and I also painted the inside of uh, two doors. And you can see right there, there's where I painted the inside of the two doors. I painted the top of the doors where the uh, door panels would meet up with them. They have to be white. And then, of course, the rest of the car is going to be a different color. But I went ahead and painted those. And then I painted these bumper ends here. Um, and before I painted those, I actually built the bumper. Uh, this bumper was totaled out, and we had to buy about $700 worth of parts to rebuild this bumper for this Chevy truck. And let me tell you what. If you had to buy every single part from the dealership to completely rebuild this bumper, it would cost you about $3,000, believe it or not. And that is no bullshit. I'm telling you the truth right there. We also have been busy block sanding the 65 GTO. And as we walk around, you can see what we're talking about here. Um, we're in the process of getting ready to paint this in a couple days and have this baby going down the road. I got the fenders uh, blocked out with 180, getting ready to block them with 320. Um, I'm dry sanding this car, I'm not wet sanding it. Uh, I like to swap back and forth and when it's in, in the winter time, when it's real cold out, um, I like to dry sand better than I do wet sand. Uh, so that's what we're doing here. We're getting it down to paint ready stage and then from there, we're going to go ahead and apply our paint and clear coat, and this thing's going to look awesome. But speaking of paint and clear coat and other chemicals related to this type of business, I started thinking, and what made me start thinking is the carburetor cleaner that I use to clean my spray gun with. And if you look right here, of course, you know, this is a high-tech, big-name brand, okay, you can buy the Napa brand or the off brand, um, where I bought this, this was the only brand that they sold, and I want to tell you that this is carburetor cleaner. Now, this is what you use to clean your spray gun with. You can buy spray gun cleaner, it's the same thing, I don't care what anybody says, I have a working and functioning gun cleaner right here, this gun cleaner works. And I used to fill this thing up with gun cleaner, five gallons of gun cleaner, once a month, when it was affordable. Did you hear that word? I used the word affordable. When it was affordable to use the gun cleaner, I used to use it all the time. I now keep it here in case I need to use it and I want to use it. It's still here. I will never get rid of my gun cleaner. It's a pneumatic pump gun cleaner, and it works awesome. So... That's what that is, and the reason I don't use it is because I can't afford it. Now, we're going to talk about chemicals tonight. We're going to talk about the corporation sticking it in your ass over chemicals. Not just chemicals, but products. Now, back in the day, I used to be able to buy five gallons of this stuff right here. For under $30. I would buy a five gallon jug of that for $30. And when I put my paint gun in there, or as you can see here, I got my cup in there, I would only leave it in there for approximately, I would say, probably two hours. When I pulled it out, that thing was spotless. It looked like a brand new cup, it looked like a brand new spray gun. And it was cleaned thoroughly 100%. I will leave this cup in here overnight. Okay, this will be an overnight procedure, what you're looking at right here. And I guarantee you, it won't even be clean. It won't even be clean. And I'll have to scrape and chip and scrub all the loose paint off it. And possibly paint that didn't want to come off. Because the chemicals that you buy today aren't even half as strong as the chemicals they used to sell 10 years ago. And this is what the real kicker is. This is the real kicker. The product is weaker, but the prices are higher. The consumer is at the losing end of a product such as this, 
and the corporation is making billions of dollars off it. Here's another product right here now. I use this to spot clean my spray gun. This is carburetor cleaner. And I'll spot clean my spray gun to make sure that it's functioning properly before I paint a car. This, all right, and this is the Napa brand, this is costing approximately two or three dollars a can. If I buy the big name brands such as Gunk, it's costing eight or nine dollars for one can of carburetor cleaner. It doesn't work like it used to. The product is cheap, it's inexpensive, it's taking twice as much chemical to use to do the job that it used to do 10 years ago. I got a phone call from the paint and body shop supplier the other day, or actually I called them and they updated me that the paint supplies have gone up considerably high. They have gone up so high that they're going to have to charge me more money because they're not making profits anymore. I believe that the prices have gone up because paint companies, especially automotive paint companies, okay, they're the worst as far as jacking prices up and keeping the prices way up there and always jacking prices up for no reason. Now, here's another good example of jacking prices up and product getting cheaper. Ten years ago, I would buy one quart of paint, one quart of DBC base coat paint, and I would be able to paint the whole front end of the truck, and here's the front end we're talking about. I'd be able to paint the inside of the hood, the top side of the hood. I'd be able to go ahead and paint both fenders, and we're not talking blending paint, we're talking full paint job, and that would be three full wet coats. I would be able to do that with one quart of paint. But we're not done there. Let me show you what else we'd be able to paint using one quart of paint. I'd also be able to paint both of these bumper ends with three full wet coats of paint, not one or two. I would use three full wet coats of paint. And you know what's really, really, really disgusting about the whole situation? Is back in the day, the paint used to match pretty damn close. The paint used to match pretty accurate where you didn't have to blend paint, where you can just paint one panel and it would match, unless it was just some oddball color and you, you know, you, you, you'd have to blend. But on a particular color like this, the paint would match pretty much almost perfect and you didn't have to do no blending at all. You just paint one panel, that's it, go down the road. But not today, and I'm going to tell you why that's the reason is. When I started doing this, there was only approximately three companies that made paint. Maybe four. You had Glazerit, you had Sherwin-Williams, you had DuPont, and you had PPG. Those were the big suppliers of paint supplies. Now, I was able to buy, back in the day, I'd be able to buy a gallon of paint. This is, we're talking about acrylic enamel. I'd be able to buy a gallon of paint, a gallon of reducer, a pint of hardener, and that would be enough to paint the whole car because the paint had more pigments in it, it had more, more, what can we say, product, it would go a lot farther, and I would be able to paint one car, and we're talking using this type of spray gun right here. We're not talking about using an HVL spray gun, you know, that costs us $2,000 for a fucking spray gun, and you know, with 1.3 nozzles and 1.5 nozzles for clear, and we got to have two, two spray guns or three spray guns to do the job. Everything that I paint is with one spray gun, this one right here. Not this particular one, it's basically this one. But I do primer, I do base coat, I do clear coat, I do everything with this one gun right here. This is it. Because back in the day, you buy one spray gun for everything. Do you kind of see the situation I'm getting into here? Do you kind of see?
So back to the chemical situation. We got carburetor cleaner that doesn't do the job that it used to do. All right, it doesn't do anything. I mean, look at that. Look at it. You can't even tell that it's been sticky. This has been in here for like 45 minutes, and you you can't even tell. You got paint supplies that you know. How many suppliers do we have now for paint and clear coat? How many? Thousands, thousands and thousands and thousands. I mean, there's so many suppliers out there that, you know, it, it's, it's a, a supplier war on who's better than who. When in reality, they're basically all the same. They're basically all the same because they're all chintzing everybody out and charging ridiculous prices. Kind of like that company it was called. Uh, what, what, what was it called? Um, I did a few videos on them. All candy, wet, wet, clear. I think he was selling a gallon of clear for like $475. $475 because this clear is the best clear in the world and you don't have to buff it and it goes on like glass and all this other shit. Bullshit. The clear that's going to work for you, the best clear, is the clear that you use all the time and you know the clear inside and out. I don't care if it's all candy wet wet or PPG 2020 or possibly Matrix MS 52 or some JP JP fucking shop line Euro clear. It doesn't matter. Whatever clear you're using, that's the clear you should use all the time because that's the clear that you know how to use and you can control it and you know exactly what to do with it. But the real deal is is the cheap, inexpensive chemicals that we are purchasing today. And this is caused, this is caused by our lovely government called the EPA. The EPA has set rules and regulations that says you can't sell that product anymore and you need to redo it because it's causing cancer. So they have taken the product and they have destabilized it, they have redesigned it, so it doesn't even work anymore. You're wasting your time even purchasing this product. You're better off getting a soda, making a homemade soda blaster and cleaning your spray gun or your carburetor with that. I was rebuilding a carburetor for our buddy Nitpick Norm. I put it in carburetor cleaner for a week. It didn't do nothing. It didn't do nothing. I'm going to leave this in here overnight and see what happens. I want to clean my cup, and then once I clean my cup, I'm going to go ahead and dismantle my spray gun, and I'll go ahead and clean that. But back to the chemical situation. This can that you're looking at is less than two quarts. That was one quart and one pint. One quart of paint, one pint of paint. How much do you think I paid for that can with one quart and one pint? And you can look right here. See, it says one quart right there, and then you come down here, and it says one pint. Okay, so that's a quart and a half of paint. How much do you think I paid for that? I'm going to go ahead and tell you. $150 for one quart and one pint of that paint right there. I remember when I can buy one quart of paint that would do everything that I showed you, and it would cost me about $28 to $35. But I can't sit here and say, oh, I'm living in the past. You know, get over it. Get over it because those days are gone and this is how it is now. And if you don't like it, tough crap. No, yeah, that's true. That is very, very true. But the thing that you got to watch is how the system is screwing us. And I'm telling you, they're screwing us. The only product that I purchased that still is reasonably priced is that product right there. I'm still paying about $11.85, $12.50 a gallon. And I've been paying that for years and years and years, and it's the exact identical same product. It hasn't changed, and it does awesome, awesome work if you know how to use it right. That's another situation we have, is body filler. How many body fillers are there out there now? 
How many companies are making body fillers that says, mine's better than yours? What you use is junk. You need to spend $150 on a gallon of Evercoat gold because that's the best stuff in the world. Well, the cars that you see come out of my shop are used with $12, gallon, $12 gallon Bondo. I don't use Evercoat. I don't use the high-tech expensive stuff because all you're doing is buying a name. I use the $12 gallon of Dyna, Dynatron, what is it? Dynatron Dynalite Bondo. And let me tell you what. It works perfect. It flows out. And it does the exact same job of any Bondo out there. I don't care what anybody says, but I will not pay $100 for a gallon of Bondo because of the name when I can actually take my Bondo and this product right here, Finishing Putty, I can mix the two of them together and guess what I have? Guess what I have? I have a $100 gallon of Bondo. Because that's all they do is add more, what do they call that stuff? Honey. Plastic honey and make it more creamier. That's it. Bondo is Bondo. Now I will say this. There are some companies out there that make crappy Bondo. I'm not saying all Bondos are the same. And what makes the Bondo crappy is when you, they sell a Let's say they sell a pallet full of Bondo that might have sat out in uh, Detroit, Michigan in 20 below zero weather and it froze and then they brought it back and then they sold it. So basically what they did is they sold a bad batch of Bondo that they shouldn't have sold. That's what makes Bondo go bad is when the weather takes over and it ruins it. And, and it, you know, it goes back to this. People don't care. They don't care. You think they're going to throw a pallet full of Bondo away? No. What they are going to do, though, is say, hey, look what I got here. I got the $100 gallon of Bondo for $20 a gallon. And make it sound like you're getting a deal, and the only thing you're doing is screwing yourself because you're using that crap that was frozen, and then they brought it back to resell to you. So watch your ass. I'm telling you now, shit happens. The reason I'm bringing this video up is not to bitch and complain, moan and groan, and talk about the corporations or the system or the government but to make you realize that times are changing times are changing I don't think I charge enough money to paint a car like this one right here because of the cost of the materials it takes to actually restore this car to restore this car, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you, the car is not rusted out, so don't look at it like it's rusted. What you're looking at is vinegar water that I haven't removed. Um, when you wash your car with vinegar water, it leaves a, a gold tint like that. So the car is not rusted. Don't think that this is a rusted car and it's sitting here rusting out. This car was soda blasted, and it's not rusting. All right? This is just from cleaning the rust off, and I have it da down and removed it okay we just got done doing this and we're letting it dry so just to clear that up I'm letting you know but then we start talking about let's say vinegar water you can take vinegar water and do exactly what I tell everybody out there to do but yet on the other hand you got companies out there selling you a product that they actually make with vinegar or they might make it with muriatic acid or they might make it with something else and they're selling it to you and you're buying it when you can actually make your own, if you watch my videos, I show you how to do all that and save yourself money. The only place you're not going to save money is right there. The big corporation that knows you need that paint. Now, I told you the price on this paint here, but let me tell you something. If you use Shopline Plus, now remember that word plus, not just Shopline, you have to use the Shopline Plus. It's identically exactly the same thing as DBC. But if you use Shopline paint, now you're degrading yourself. And you're going down into, let's say, the Omni, the Omni uh, group of paint. Omni paint is the cheapest paint you can buy. It's junk. It doesn't cover. And it's just piss poor shit. So always remember, 
you want to get a nice top quality paint job. But the reason I use ShopLite Plus is because the DBC brand paint that I used to use has gone so outrageously sky high, I can't make money using it. I can't make money anymore because it, the, the product is so high that it's ridiculous to buy. But then we get back to the EPA and this crap here. And this goes for stripper too. Aircraft stripper or any kind of paint stripper that you buy, it's the same thing. Okay, and I believe this has the same chemical in it that aircraft stripper does. Methanol, ethanol. Um, I don't know for sure, but uh, it's basically the same deal. Methanol, ethanol, it, uh, and it, you know, they, the whole can is a, a warning label, you know, to protect them. But, you know, here's, here's the situation. They say that this causes cancer and all this bad shit to you. Well, let me ask you this question. What about the pan that you just fried your eggs in that's got a Teflon coating on it? And you get a little bit of that Teflon, and when you're scraping, when you're scraping the bottom of that pan, that Teflon actually goes into your food and you eat that. That's a, that's a chemical that causes cancer and, and all kinds of other shit. What about, what about Monsanto GMO? Genetically modified organisms. What about that? That causes cancer. But they don't care about that, see? They're more worried about breaking the compound down, making it basically diluted water, and selling it to you for higher prices than it used to be when it was really good stuff. What about toilet paper? Everybody in the world uses toilet paper. Even homeless people use toilet paper. Somebody that's dead, flat, busted, broke, you're going to use toilet paper. Have you bought a bag of toilet paper lately? Have you seen how cheap and inexpensive and small the rolls are of the toilet paper? But yet, on the other hand, it's one of the most expensive things that a human being can buy is a bag of fucking paper to wipe their ass? It's ridiculous. It is pure ridiculousness. Minnie the Body Shop Girl went to Target to buy some toilet paper. We ran out of toilet paper. And I opened up that roll of toilet paper. Now, have you ever been at a truck stop or a gas station and used the toilet paper? It's like newspaper. It's, it's just cheap, inexpensive shit. Okay. She paid like $22 or $18 for this bag of toilet paper. And I went to use the toilet paper and it was identically exactly the same as truck stop toilet paper. I called her on the phone and I said, hey, you need to take this toilet paper back. She said, look, it's cheaper than the other stuff. The other stuff we used, they went up to $28 for a bag of it. $28 for a bag of toilet paper that you might be able to wipe your ass with one roll. You might be able to wipe your ass six times. Because they roll the toilet paper very, very loosely and they're about half the size of what they used to be back in the day. But you know, I'm just going back in time uh, and, and I'm reminiscing and I'm telling everybody out there that I know what it was like back in the day when I was doing this and you know, making money. I'm just warning you and forewarning you that beware because it's not over. That uh, quart of paint that I paid over $100 for in 10 years from now will be $200. Um, for me to paint a car like this in 10 years from now for you, all right, if this was a $10,000 job now, it will be an $18,000 to $22,000 job. That's what's going to kill the industry of restoring cars is the price tag. It's already getting outrageous where people are already on the verge of, I can't afford that. I can't afford it. Uh, I can't do it. They're already getting to that point now. So you can imagine what it's going to be like in 10 more years when it's going to cost $20,000 to restore this car because of the corporations that are screwing you and me out of doing this type of work. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, giving you some thoughts to think about and giving you ideas to say, you know what? I don't think I want to open a paint and body shop and I don't want to be self-employed because it's really not worth it. I'm going to be like my friend Pete and I'm going to be broke. And I'm going to bitch and complain every day and holler and scream because I'm not making enough money restoring this car. Take it easy. I hope you learned something from this. 
And don't take it the wrong way. I'm not hollering and screaming. I don't hate the world. But you know what I do hate? The system that makes you and me the hard-working son of a bitches that we are pay more money that we don't have to make a living, to put food on our tables, and to pay our bills. Take it easy. We'll see you down the road. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.